Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have the square root of x times y is equal to x plus 3y. And we want to find the derivative dy dx of this implicitly defined function. And so the first step of our implicit differentiation process is to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of our equation. And so that's what we will do to begin. However, I just want to point out that we probably want to change this square root of x times y to x times y to the 1 half power. So I will start by actually redefining that right off the bat like this. And that will make it easier for us to take our derivative. So if I take the derivative with respect to x of both sides, we will have d dx of xy to the 1 half power equal to the derivative or d dx of x plus 3y. And now we'll go through and take the derivative of each side. And you'll see that on our left side of the equation, we're going to have a chain rule and a product rule. So we see that we have an outer function of the square root or this quantity to the 1 half power. And we also have the inner function x times y, which we will have to use a product rule to take the derivative of that. So let's go through this piece by piece. First, we'll start our chain rule by taking the derivative of our outside function. So we're going to have 1 half times x times y to the power of 1 half minus 1, right? So we multiplied our exponent in front of this quantity and then subtracted 1 from our exponent. Then, now that we've taken the derivative of our outside function, we need to take the derivative of our inside function, x times y. And this is because anytime you see an x multiplied by a y in any form, you need to use the product rule to take their derivative. So what we will do now is multiply by the derivative of x times y. And that's going to be that product rule that I mentioned. So we're gonna start with our first function, x multiplied by the derivative of y, our second function. And the derivative of y would just be one, but since we are taking a derivative of that y with a respect to x, right, we're taking this derivative with respect to x, we will have to multiply by dy dx. Then we will add our second function y multiplied by the derivative of x, which is just going to be one. And then we can close that. And so that's the end of our product rule and our chain rule, right? We took the derivative of our outer function, which was this right here. And then we took the derivative of our inner function x times y right here. And this is going to be equal to the derivative with respect to x of x plus three y. So we're gonna have one derivative of x would just be one. And then we'll add the derivative of three y, which would be three. But since it is y and we're taking a derivative with respect to x, we also need to multiply by dy dx. So remember, when you take a derivative with respect to x of a variable that isn't x, such as y, just treat it as if it were x and then multiply by dy dx or whatever the variable would be. If it was z instead of y, it would be dz dx. So just keep that in mind that every time you take a derivative of y instead of x, you need to multiply by that dy dx term. And now we're ready to simplify. So we are going to have 1 half times x times y to the negative 1 half power times x dy dx plus y. And that's going to be equal to 1 plus 3 dy dx. And so now the next thing I'm going to do is move this term with a negative exponent to the denominator of this side of the equation. And then we'll move on to our next step but that's going to make it easier for us to simplify even further and then get our dy dx terms all on the same side. So we will have x times dy dx plus y, which is coming from here, and that's going to be divided by two times x times y to the one half power, right? All we did was move this term with a negative exponent into the denominator so that we would then have a positive exponent. And this is still going to be equal to one plus three dy dx. So now I'll clean things up and we'll move on to our next step. So the next step we're gonna do is we are going to multiply both sides by this two times x, y to the one half power. And that's going to eliminate that term on this side of the equation and move it over here. So that's what we are going to do next. So we're gonna have x times dy dx plus y is equal to this quantity multiplied by each part of this side of the equation. So we will have this times one, so that will be equal to two times x times y to the one half power. And then if we multiply that by our three dy dx, we will have plus six, right? That three and that two will multiply to become six, x, y to the one half power dy dx. And now our next step will be to get all of our dy dx terms on one side of the equation and then put everything else that doesn't have dy dx on the other side of the equation. And so that means we're going to move this term over here 
and we will move this y over to the other side. So we'll do that. So now we will have x times dy dx, and then we're going to subtract this term, so we will have minus six times xy to the one half power dy dx, and that will be equal to two times xy to the one half power, right? That did not change. This term is still on this side of the equation, and then we will subtract this y. So we'll have minus y. So now we have all of our terms with dy dx in them on this side of the equation and all of the other terms that don't have it on this side. And now we're ready for our next step. All right, I cleaned up my work again, and now we're ready for our next step, which is to factor out our dy dx out of each term here. So we are going to have dy dx times x minus six times x times y to the one half power, and that will be equal to two times x times y to the one half power minus y. So all we did here was we took this dy dx out of each of these terms and wrote what was left in this quantity, right? So if we multiply this back through here, we would get this all over again. But now we only have one dy dx, so now we can finally solve for our derivative dy dx by dividing both sides by this quantity. And that is our final step here. We will have dy dx is equal to two times x times y to the one half power minus y divided by x minus six times xy to the one half power. And if we wanted to, we could actually simplify this one more time and we would have that this is equal to two times the square root of xy minus y all divided by x minus six times the square root of xy. And that would be the derivative of our implicitly defined function that we started with. Next, we have the function sine x is equal to x times the quantity tangent y minus nine. And once again, we wanna find the derivative or dy dx of this implicitly defined function. So we'll start by taking the derivative with respect to x of both sides. And so if we start with sine x, that's gonna be a pretty easy one, right? That's just going to be cosine x because the derivative of sine x is cosine x. And this is going to be equal to the derivative of x times the quantity tangent y minus nine. So this is going to be a product rule, but it's not gonna to be too difficult. So our x is going to be our first function and this quantity will be our second function. So then if we go through our product rule, we will have our first function x times the derivative of our second function, which is just going to be secant squared y. But since we took a derivative of this function tangent y with respect to x, we also need to multiply by dy dx. And then of course the derivative of negative nine would be zero, so we don't need to worry about that. And then we can go on to our next term of our product rule, which would be plus the original second function, so tangent y minus nine, and that would be multiplied by the derivative of x, which is just going to be one. And so then we can simplify. We'll have that cosine x is equal to x secant squared y dy dx plus tangent y minus nine. And so the next thing we wanna do is move all of our dy dx terms to one side of the equation. Now in this case, we only have one, so this is kind of easy. We just have to move all of our other terms to the other side. So that's the next step. We will have cosine x, and then we're gonna subtract this tangent y term, so we'll have minus tangent y, and then we'll add this nine, we'll have plus nine, and that will be equal to x secant squared y dy dx. And then our final step is just to divide both sides by this x secant squared y to isolate this dy dx. And then that will be the derivative of our function. So we will have that dy dx is equal to cosine x minus tangent y plus nine divided by this right here. So x secant squared y. And that is our final answer or our derivative of our implicitly defined function up here. So now let's look at another example. Next we have the derivative of cosine of x plus y is equal to x squared times y. And once again, we wanna find the derivative or dy dx of this implicitly defined function. So we will start by taking the derivative of both sides of the equation with respect to x. So if we do that for cosine of x plus y, we have a chain rule here, right? We have a function within another function or a composite function. So we will have to take the derivative of our outside function, which is going to be cosine, and then take the derivative of our inside function, x plus y. So let's start with the outside function. 
the derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine, and then we will keep the same inside function. We will not change that. And then we will multiply by the derivative of our inside function. So the derivative of x is going to be one with respect to x, and then the derivative of y is also one. But since we are taking the derivative with respect to x, we have to multiply that one by dy dx, and that will end that derivative. And then we're ready to take the derivative of the other side of the equation. So this is going to be equal to the derivative of x squared times y. And that's going to be a product rule. Anytime you see x times y in any capacity, whether it's x squared, x cubed, or y squared, or just y to the first power like it is here, you're going to need to use the product rule to take the derivative of that, right? So anytime you see a function of x times a function of y, you will need to use the product rule. And so in this case, our two functions are x squared and y. And so if we follow our product rule, we will have the first function, x squared, times the derivative of the second. So that will be multiplied by the derivative of y, which is just going to be one, but then we multiply it by dy dx. And then we will add that to our second function, y, multiplied by the derivative of the first function. And so the derivative of x squared with respect to x is going to be two x. And now we're ready to simplify. I'll notice with this quantity here that I don't need to have this one written here, right? We can just have one plus dy dx, and then we can distribute this sine function to each part of this quantity. And that's gonna be really helpful to isolating this dy dx so that we can solve for it. So let's distribute that sine function. We are going to have that function multiplied by one, so we'll just have negative sine of x plus y, and then we will add it to negative sine of x plus y times dy dx, so that's actually gonna be negative, and then we will have sine of x plus y dy dx, and that will be equal to x squared dy dx plus two xy. I just like to rearrange these to look a little nicer. And now our next step is to get all of our dy dx terms onto the same side of the equation. So what I'm going to do is I will add this term, because it has dy dx, over to this side, and then I will subtract this term to over here so that we get all the dy dx terms on one side and everything else on the other. And so if I do that, we will then have negative sine of x plus y, and then we are going to be subtracting this 2xy, so I'll have minus 2xy, and that is going to be equal to x squared dy dx, right? We did not move this term anywhere, it's staying on this side. We're just adding over this other dy dx term. So we'll have plus sine of x plus y times dy dx. And then our next step is going to be to factor out that dy dx out of each of these terms so that we can then isolate it. So we'll have the same thing on this side. We'll have negative sine of x plus y minus 2xy. And now this is going to be equal to dy dx. And we are pulling it out of each of these terms. So we will have x squared plus sine of x plus y. And now we are almost done. All we have to do now is isolate this dy dx by dividing both sides by this quantity. And so I'll clean up my work a little bit and then we will do that. All right, so then if we solve for dy dx by dividing both sides by this quantity, we will have that dy dx is equal to that negative sine of x plus y minus two xy divided by this quantity, x squared plus sine of x plus y. And that is our final answer. We finally got our derivative of this function that is implicitly defined using our implicit differentiation process. And with that, we have one more example that I wanna go over. All right, so for our final example here about implicit differentiation, we have x squared times y plus four y equal to eight. But now instead of just finding the derivative, we are interested in finding the value of the derivative at a particular point. In this case, we have two, one. And so let's do this as we have been doing, where we find the derivative, dy dx, and then we'll worry about plugging in our value once we find it. So the first step is to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. And so if we do that for our left side here, we will be taking the derivative of x squared times y and four y. But let's focus on this x squared times y. What is important about this? Well, anytime you see a function of x, such as x squared, multiplied by a function of y, you need to use the product rule. You cannot skip that. If you do, you will get an incorrect answer. So you have to use the product rule here, and so that's what we will do. So our first function is x squared, and our second function is y. So if we follow our product rule, the derivative will be the first function, x squared, times the derivative of y, which is going to be one, 
And then because we took a derivative of a function of y with respect to x, we then also need to multiply by dy dx, right? If you don't have that, you're not going to be able to find a derivative. We have to multiply by that dy dx every time you take a derivative of a function of y with respect to x. Then we move on to our second term of our product rule. So then we will add the second function y times the derivative of x squared. So we will have 2x. Now we didn't have to write dy dx this time because we didn't take a derivative of a function with y. We just wrote our second function, which happens to have y. We did not take the derivative of it. We took the derivative of x squared this time, not y. All right, and so that's the end of our product rule. And then we will take the derivative of this plus 4y. So we know the derivative of 4y will just be plus 4. But then once again, because we took a derivative of y, we need to multiply by dy dx. And then this will be equal to the derivative of 8 with respect to x, which is just going to be 0 because the derivative of a constant is 0. All right, and so now let's simplify. We will have x squared dy dx plus 2xy plus 4 dy dx. And that's still going to be equal to zero. And so our next step is going to be to get all of our dy dx terms on one side of the equation and everything else on the other side. So in this case, all we have to do to meet those requirements is move this 2xy over to the other side. And then we have both of our dy dx terms on the same side. So we will have x squared dy dx plus 4 dy dx is equal to negative 2xy. And now what we can do is we can factor out this dy dx term. That is the next thing that we want to do so that we are then able to isolate that dy dx and solve for it. So if we do that, we will have dy dx times x squared plus 4 is equal to negative 2xy. All right, and then we have one more step to do, but I need to make some space before we can finish it off. All right, so we found that dy dx times x squared plus 4 is equal to negative 2xy. And so then to finally solve for dy dx, we are going to divide both sides by this x squared plus 4 term so that we can isolate the dy dx. Whatever this is multiplied by, we want to divide over to the other side. So we are going to have dy dx is equal to negative 2xy divided by x squared plus 4. And that is the derivative of our implicitly defined function. However, this did not answer our original question, which is what is the value of this derivative at the point 2, 1. So let's do that yet. So if we want to find the value of the derivative, or dy dx, at the value of 2, 1, what we're going to do is we are going to plug in 2 for every x in our derivative and plug in 1 for every y in our derivative. So this will be equal to negative 2 times 2 times 1. And then that will be divided by 2 squared plus 4. So we plugged in 2 for our x here and our x here. That's why we have 2 and 2 squared. And then we plugged in 1 for y. And that's where this one came from. And now we can simplify. We have negative 2 times 2, which is going to be negative 4. And the negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. So we will have negative 4 on the top. And then on the bottom, we have 2 squared, which is 4 plus 4. And so that would be 8. And then we can reduce that, and we will have that our answer is negative 1 half. And so that's the answer to our original question, which asked us, what is the value of the derivative or the slope of this function at the point 2, 1? All right, and that was the last example for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, that's all I have for now. So I will see you next time.